Now that's three. That's about three. Two and three. Go on up. Four, five, and six. As you come to him, the living stone, you've seen that. All right, come on up one more time. Scripture says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. Now let's go up one more. As you come to him, the living stone, what are you to do? Keep going. One more. Yeah. For in Scripture says one more. <laughs> now to you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected become the capstone and, ah, a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people. There we go. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may do what? Declare the praises of God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Now let's look at it for just a moment. Someone asked me, in the restroom a while ago, and I won't tell you who it was, Bob Collier. I won't tell on you. But, <laughs> but anyway, he said, is it going to be long this morning? <laughs> I said, you're sounding just like my wife. <laughs> the first thing I want us to see this morning is that he's called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. This story was passed on to me by my grandparents. My parents divorced in 1953 when I was 10 years old. <clears throat> but before that, even before I was born, my father was born in 1918. My, his brother, my Uncle Kenny, born in 1922. And my Aunt Betty, their sister, was born in 1927. So here you have them, four, four, and five, three children. One night, they're sitting out in the country, in the, in the house, in the farmhouse. Now, this farmhouse, I want you to get a picture here. This farmhouse has a back door that you go out of, and you walk down the hill a little ways, and you come to a door to the basement. And you can open the basement and go in. We did not have running water, and so we had to run to the well and get it, and <laughs> put it into the pot and so forth, and get it hot and so forth. But one night, this before I was born, Grandpa said they were sitting there in the front room, and all of a sudden they heard, boom, bang, boom, boom. It was dark. What was going on in the basement? So Grandpa gets his gun, and just like a cartoon almost, my dad follows behind him, his younger brother, imagining them to be like 16, 12, and now after that, seven, my Aunt Betty, and Grandma's in the back. And they come down the hill, they push open the door, and Grandpa sticks the gun in, and he says, Come out! Come out! There was no sound. But the room is all so dark. They'd just gotten electricity, not through. And there's one string that hangs in the middle of the basement that you pull to turn on the light. Between the door and the light string is a little distance. Come out! There was no movement. And he got to the string and he pulled it and turned it on, and everyone started laughing. The tomatoes that Grandma had canned blew up. In the <laughs> and so it's how puff, puff, puff. <laughs> but when you're walking into darkness, it's kind of scary, isn't it? You don't know what you're facing. But the great good news is he's called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. 
And I'd like to share that with you for just a few moments. Hopefully, it'll be soon enough for Bob to get his lunch today and get on the road. <laughs> Number one, <clears throat> God has called us to live a life, to live a life that is different than the world's. Do you know that what you and I do in our lives will often speak louder than the words we say? The things that people see in our lifestyle will often speak much louder than the very words we, that come forth from our mouth. And right here, Peter is telling us, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers. Love one another deeply. Now you don't have to go around like Jeff Moore. And give everyone a really big hug. But it's great. I love it. Every time I come I look forward to it. Except when I hurt my ribs the other day. But other than that. I look forward to that. And to love each other deeply. Means to think of each other's needs. What do you need? that I could provide for you? How could I help you? Love each other deeply. Because in this world, there is not that kind of love. The grass withers, the flowers fall. But we've been born to a different type. We've been born to an eternal word, the word of God. That's Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, He was with God. In the same, in the beginning, with God. That's Jesus, our Word. So number one, let's examine our lifestyle. Do you say one thing and do another? I told you you might not like me after we finish today. So I'm going to ask some hard questions. Do you say you're a Christian, but the way you live despicks otherwise? You say you are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings? Does my life say otherwise? Remember what Paul said, or the writer of Hebrews, whoever you consider, in Hebrews 12, 14? Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. We have an objective, don't we? As children of the Son of God, we have an objective. To so live our lives that they bring glory to the Father. He's called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. For what? To declare the praises of him who did this for you and for me. Secondly. Okay, am I going fast enough, Bob? Secondly. <laughs> we need to reject our enemy. The devil. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, resisting, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you suffer a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. That's 1 Peter 5 if you want to flip ahead. He, he has called us to resist the enemy. James 4, 7 and 8 tell us what? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He's a coward. If you know your enemy is a coward... Why do you want to be afraid of him? Well, because I can't see him, for number one. But 
We have help that's indestructible. God. Is that not right? Isn't that what the first part of 1 Peter said? Now we're into the first, second part of 1 Peter. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit. Now, why did he stick those together? Have you ever felt like someone was saying something out of one side of their mouth and really was meaning something else? Oh, you really look good today. And they're saying, wow, I can't stand that dress he has on. She looks pretty ugly in it. But anyway, malice and deceit. We have to be careful, don't we? Lord, look into my heart and hypocrisy. I love the way Chinese says this. Two-hearted person. <laughs> That's hypocrisy. You say one thing, but you really mean something else. And so when you look at malice and deceit and hypocrisy and you put them together, it's kind of going down a row, isn't it? And then envy and slander. Why do we slander other people? Are we envious of them? Hard questions, isn't it? But he tells us to put all these away. And then he says further down, and I don't often jump from like verse 2 down to verse 11, but he says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires that war against your soul. <clears throat> Jesus said, we're not to fear him that can kill the body, and after that has nothing he can do. We are to fear him who, after he has killed the body, has power to cast into hell as well. I ask you this morning, Are you abstaining and seeking to abstain from the worldly way of living? Coming back to America this time, <clears throat> there's several things that have been disturbing to me, but one of them is this confusion about genders. How many genders are there? Well, God said, in the beginning, I created the male and female. So if you're having trouble figuring it out, we'll be glad to accompany you into the restroom if you need that help. But I imagine you could just take off your clothes and look at yourself and decide. Biologically, which are you? It's like I said, some of the things I'm saying today will not be very popular. That isn't my purpose. <laughs> my purpose is for us, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires that war against your soul. And coming back, Patrick Mahomes, Matthews, they have a little girl, but now they're talking about getting married. Well, good for them. What's the matter with what God said? Thus a man shall leave his mother and father and cling unto his wife. What happened to that? And I like Patrick Mahomes. In fact, he talks about being a Christian and so forth. But somehow it doesn't jive in my way of thinking. Am I too old? So, are you living with a man and not married to him? Are you living with a woman and not married to her? I told you, you may want to throw rotten tomatoes at me by the time I leave this morning, but I'm going to ask some questions. <laughs> and even though you may not believe it, and I don't think I have a 
Shinar Idarin, when I say this, I do love you. Otherwise, I wouldn't speak like I'm speaking this morning. So, number one, live a lifestyle that honors him. Number two, resist the devil. Resist him. And number three, submit to God. Now, that's a pretty easy outline for you to remember, isn't it? Lifestyle, resist the devil, submit to God. Why? Because we have a living stone that is precious to God. He was chosen by God and he's precious to God. And he will not allow us to stumble. If. If. What is the if? If we remain on him. If we as also living stones being built into a holy church will listen to what God says. You know what I find or what I found as a father and even today the children that we have in Taiwan in the home. <clears throat> if you know that child obeys you and that child is obeying you you know that child loves you they may inside of them have a little different spirit I may be obeying you now but I'm standing up on the inside that type of attitude but God tells us here if you love me you will obey me you will listen to my commands why does a man or a woman fall? Why do we fall? Because we disobey. Because we say, Father, I know what your word says, but Father, this is what I think. We never do that, do we? Some of you are not smiling any longer. I love you. We are called out of darkness into his wonderful light. Let us live a lifestyle that honors him. Let us resist Satan, our enemy, because he is a coward. And let us submit to God. Who knows what's best for us. Have you ever looked at Deuteronomy chapter 10. Verses 11 and 12. Maybe it's 10 and 11. I may have forgotten. That. He says. Do these commands. For your own good. What has God laid down in his word? What is for us? What is best for us? He's not out to get us. He's out to help us. He wants to do what's best for you and for me. Will we listen? <clears throat> this week I received, this by the way, is <clears throat> the year of the tiger in Taiwan. And I received this week from our children. And last night they called. And it brought tears to my eyes. Because today is my 79th birthday. And these are birthday greetings from the kids. Now, you can look at them if you want to, but I doubt if you'll be able to read them. <laughs> but you're welcome to look at them. When I was a young lad, one evening, my grandmother said, let's walk over to your house where your dad and mom are. So I must have been six or seven years old because, as I told you, dad and mom divorced when I was ten. 
we were walking. Now, we're walking in the country. We're walking for about two and a half miles. There are no streetlights. And that day, on the radio, it had been announced that there had been an escapee from the prison in Jefferson City, which is 30 miles away from us. And, of course, as a young lad, I have a very imaginative spirit, and I'm thinking, as we're walking, hmm, it sure is dark here. And then I begin to hear, swish, And I'm thinking, what is that? Did that prisoner come and escape over there and he's in those woods by there and he's going to jump out? And then I remember Grandpa telling me a story in years past of relatives of ours that was riding his horse on that very road, on that gravel road, coming in and something dropped on the back of his horse. Turned out to be a mountain lion. But nonetheless, all of these things were in this young lad's life and in my heart as I was walking. And the more I walked and the more I heard that swish, 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 the scareder I got. Is that a word, scareder? The more afraid I got. Anyway, you know where I was going with this. I was never so happy in all my life to get to the home where my dad and mom were, two and a half miles away, where there was light. And then my grandpa started laughing again. He said, get up next to your grandmother and walk for just a moment. And I heard it. Swish, swish, swish. I was so close to grandma's skirt that that sound was rubbing against my pants. Swish, 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 swish. And he said, did you hear the sound like, hoo, 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 hoo? I said, yeah, I heard it. Those are owls. I really didn't have anything to be afraid of, but I was scared to death. It was dark, and I didn't like it. God has called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. We can see. There's more than just a light that you have a string and you pull it. <laughs> There's light for all eternity. And so I'd like to close with these thoughts. He's called us into his wonderful light to do what? To praise him. To praise him. I was finishing up the Psalm 119 this morning in my quiet time. And if you look at Psalm 119, verses 164, 171, and 175, you will see there that he has called us to praise him. Praise him for his wonderful law. Praise him for his decrees. Praise him for his love. And you look at Psalm 86, verses 11 and 12, and he says, he has called us. And we're no longer in darkness, but we're walking in light because of his word. So finally, I want to <clears throat> settle in your hearts and minds that you really do need to use rotten tomatoes on me this morning. What is more important to you? That one-eyed monster in your living room or reading the word of God? on a daily basis. Now look, preacher, I think you said enough. You're stepping on toes. I wasn't called to just satisfy. I hope I get some lunch. I was called to preach the Word of God, and I want you to know the Word of God, and I want the Word of God to be in your heart and in your minds and in your souls. And if you need to, turn off that machine in the corner of your front room and just open up the Word of God. Somebody asked me one time, how did you memorize First and Second Peter? Well, I didn't do it all in one day. I'd memorize a verse or two, and then I'd go running, and I'd go riding my bike, and I'd keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it.
But we need to put the word here. And again, I remind you of Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11. How can a young person, I like the Chinese better than English, not how can a young man, because it's a young woman just as well. How can a young person keep his life pure? By taking heed unto your word. I will seek you, Lord, with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. Who do you and I want to please in this life? More than anything else in the world, I pray it's like Abraham when he was ready to sacrifice Isaac. I pray it will be God, whatever you say. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for life in him. Thank you for the privilege that we have to share together today. Thank you that we can remember the sacrifice made for us. To give us a living hope. An incorruptible inheritance. An indestructible power that saves us. Oh Father thank you. And help us to love you with all of our heart. Our soul. Our mind and our strength. Help us to put your word in our hearts and our souls. Use us oh God and mold us that we might be the children that you want us to be. And like Jesus, help us to learn the things that we need to learn, even though we may have to suffer. We love you, Father. We praise you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.